Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue mill deck called Mystery Mill as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And it's called Mystery Mill for two reasons. One of them is we're playing with Sage of Mysteries, one of the new cards from Theros. One mana for an O2 creature with Constellation, saying whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. And then the other reason we're calling this a mystery mill is because at the start of each game it's a mystery whether or not we're going to try to mill the opponent to win the game or whether we're going to try to mill ourselves. And the reason we would want to mill ourselves is because we're also playing with Thassa's Oracle, two mana for a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard saying when the Oracle enters the battlefield look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue, then put one of them on top of your library and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. So it's kind of like an improved version of Omen Speaker. But then if X is green greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So if you can mill yourself enough and then play Thassa's Oracle with very few cards remaining in your library, you can potentially win the game on the spot. So if we have a Thassa's Oracle in our opening hand, then we can kind of sculpt our game plan around it by milling ourselves with our various mill effects, and then we can play Thassa's Oracle to win the game. Sometimes if we don't have the Oracle in our opening hand, or if we're facing a deck with a lot of hand disruption and counter spells, and we won't be able to reliably win with Thassa's Oracle, it's going to be better to mill the opponent. And that's the beauty about this deck, is that all the various mill effects, all the way from Sage of Mysteries to Drowned Secrets, allow us to target both players, so we can either mill ourselves or mill the opponent. So that makes this deck uh, pretty interesting to play, as every game will play out much differently based on your opening hands and the decks you're facing. So let's go over the entire deck. So at one mana we've got our Sage of Mysteries, then the other big mill effect in the deck is Drowned Secrets, a two mana enchantment, so it also synergizes with our Sage of Mystery, saying whenever we cast a blue spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. So both our mill engines are very cheap and we can easily get them in play and maybe play multiple copies, and then as soon as we start casting blue spells, or in the case of the Sage enchantment, we can very quickly mill someone out. And then we also have the full playset of Mermaid, since we are such an enchantment, enchantment heavy deck, which we may have entered the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield, so we can potentially get additional copies of Drowned Secrets by copying it with the Mermaid. And then the rest of the deck is composed of a lot of cheap draw effects to help us find the various mill engines, and then we also have some enchantment removal to slow down the opponent if they're a creature deck, to give ourselves enough time to win by milling. So at one mana we've got the full play set of Opt, as a nice one mana instant to scry one and draw a card. Great in combination with Drowned Secrets as a way to mill someone for two for just one mana. And of course it replaces itself, so we will often hold Opts if we have a Drowned Secrets in hand until after we drop the enchantment. Then we also have the full playset of So Tiny as a 1 mana flash enchantment that can enchant an opposing creature, giving it minus 2 minus 0, but it can also get minus 6 minus 0 instead if its controller has 7 or more cards in their graveyard. So if we're doing the self milling, So Tiny is usually only going to be minus 2 minus 0, but if we're doing the opponent milling, then So Tiny becomes a much better removal spell for 1 mana. Then at 2 mana, of course, we've got our Thassa's Oracle, so if we have this in our opening hand, we can easily go on the self-mill plan to start with, and kind of adjust from there based on what the opponent is doing. And of course, if we draw multiples, we can feel free to run one out there, but usually want to keep one in hand at all times, since we're not guaranteed to draw additional copies, even with all the draw effects in the deck. Then of course we've got our Drowned Secrets, which is one of the more important cards in the deck. Then we also have four copies of Frogify as another removal spell, enchanting an opposing creature, turning it into a 1-1 frog that loses all abilities. And then we have some new enchantments from Theros, including four copies of Metamise Prophecy, a two mana saga on the first chapter we get to scry two. Second chapter we have to choose a card name, and on the third chapter, if we cast a spell with the chosen name for the first time this turn, we get to draw two cards. So it takes a while to get full value out of the prophecy, but it will eventually eventually net us an extra card. And then on the last chapter we also get to look at the top card of each player's library for some additional information. And then we also have the full playset of Omen of the Sea as a 2 mana flash enchantment that when it enters the battlefield lets us scry 2 and then draw a card. And we can also sacrifice it for 3 mana to scry 2 once again. And then we've got our 4 copies of a Mermaid, which can also copy our Frogify and uh, So Tiny if we need an extra removal spell. But for the most part we would like to copy Drowned Secrets to get additional copies of it in play. And then we have 24 beautiful basic islands, no real need for Castle Ventress, and this way we also keep the deck a little bit more budget friendly. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the play, and so yeah, we've got a pretty nice opening hand. Oracle means we're on the self mill plan. We've got double drowned secrets, so looks good. And of course, we always prefer to be on a self mill plan because our deck naturally draws a lot of cards, which is also a form of uh, self milling. But sometimes, uh, if you're facing a lot of counter spells and discard, it's not very reliable to keep the oracle in hand the entire game. Facing Season of Growth, so it's an aura heavy deck. I get to go Sage into Drown Secrets. Drown Secrets into Sage would have had the same result here. And yeah, then we just want to find some card draw effects. We've got three engines. Now we need some card draw to fuel all these uh, engines. Frogify can take care of Satassin Champion. Alright, I guess we'll run out one Thassa's Oracle here, since we've got a backup. So already 38 cards remaining. Minus another 4. And I guess Omen of the Sea looks good here. Mirror could copy Drowned Secrets, which is okay, but I think we're looking for more cantrips, and hopefully Omen can find more uh, card draw enchantments. So we've got a very nice start. Let's see if the opponent can still uh, get something going. Of course, the downside of our enchantment-based removal is that it doesn't completely eliminate the opposing threat. So it's definitely a lot worse than your typical red and black removal that you're used to. And yeah, opponent's just going all in on this champion. They might not get the constellation trigger, but uh, sometimes these aura decks have a very low creature count, and they might eventually find an Eidolon to give protection from blue, and then Frogify will fall off. I can take three, Strample anyway, so... No easy way to really block it. And then we want to make sure to mill ourselves first with the Sage of Mysteries before Scry to draw a card. Otherwise we might mess up our Scry decision. And then Opt seems totally fine. Replaces itself. And mills us for another four. And then do we want another Thassa's Oracle. So how many cards do we have left? 22, so we're getting close. Don't know if I quite want another Thassa's Oracle. Like a cantrip would be much better here. But Thassa's Oracle can put a cantrip on top and I don't think my opponent's scaling me into attacks. So maybe it's good enough? Sure. Also increases our devotion for the next oracle. So when we cast the oracle, we mill for another 4. So we're gonna have 16 cards remaining and our devotion will be 9. So yeah, we just need to find a cheap blue spell to put on top and then the turn after we should be able to win the game. Alright, but our opponent's gonna put up uh, a pretty big Satassin champion. Double all that glitters. Alright, I guess we might be dead. So I might need to put a stop on upkeep to try and find something better here. So we're down to four. And then, yeah, I don't think we can afford to scry with Omen. So I'll just take my draw step. So, yeah, I don't think this is gonna do it. Can play an Oracle Mill for four. I think we're gonna be a little bit short on actually winning. So let's see here. Oracle happens. Devotion's nine. I think we might be like one card short of actually winning. So if I play Oracle now, I mill for another four. 
So I have 12 cards remaining. And then my Devotion will be 11. So I'm one card short of actually winning here. Yeah, maybe we should have been greedier with uh, not keeping the Thassa's Oracle. Because if we had found maybe a cantrip, we could have won. So I guess there's another Oracle left. But I'm probably not going to have a lot of Devotion left once these all die. Assuming they don't just kill me here. I'll say it can give pro blue, and that should uh, win the game on the spot. Yeah, so close. One card. So if something had gone slightly differently, it could have gone our way. GG's. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't like this opening hand for lances a lot, and we don't have any of our mill engines, which we really need to have pretty early in the game. This is better. Double Sage of Mysteries. Nothing great to copy with the Mermaid yet. So it could be the card I put on the bottom, but of course with Double Sage we want to keep as many enchantments as possible. So maybe we'll put a land on the bottom and be a bit uh, greedy here. Since we don't need more than four lands usually to operate at full capacity. And even just two or three lands is functional enough. So, do we want to mill ourselves or the opponents? Given that we're missing the Oracle, I'm probably going to start with milling the opponent here. Right on I've got the Fairy Bounce of Sage. I guess it gives us an extra Secrets trigger. Otherwise, I could have potentially killed the Fairy by putting Frogify on my own Sage of Mysteries. Although that's not really a play I want to make. Could also go for the Mirror Maid, my Drowned Secrets, but I think I want to have double sage in play first to make use of that constellation trigger. So, opponent on some sort of band deck, not sure what flavor, looks like kind of a rampy with dream trawler as their top end. Tamyo, alright. Well, Tamyo mills the opponent as well, so potentially hurts them. The Although I guess the minus is pretty good when we're milling them since they got back a Dream Trawler. That's fine. Another Sage of Mysteries isn't bad. Uro also potentially bad to uh, mill the opponents when they have escape cards. Although there's not a lot of constructed playable ones. Uro is one of the few ones. So lots of Nissans, Dream Trawlers, the Fairies. Opponent's got 32 cards remaining. And there's Nissa. Do need to find some card draw effects here. Some Omen of the Sea or Prophecy would be great. Opponent will plus Tamiyo. Alright, Omen of the Scene, there we go. So we get to mill the opponent for 10 here with each enchantment we play. And my opponent concedes, alright. Well, that's how you beat a pile of uh, Planeswalkers. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this seems okay. We've got a Drowned Secret, so hopefully we can find some more Drowned Secrets or uh, Mermaids or Sages. And then double Sotania's interaction. And yeah, I think I'm down to put a Sotania on the Hawk. I guess we could wait until we get Drowned Secrets in play to get a mill 2 out of it. And the Healer's Hawk doesn't hit super hard. Although if they go a Jani Sprite mate here, I might regret it. Alright, they're a black white life gain deck, and yeah, there's the Jani Sprite mate. So we seem to be on the mill the opponent plan here. Given that we don't have a copy of uh, Thassa's Oracle yet, and uh, the Sotinis also get much better for milling the opponent. So let's do that. And then probably so tiny. I guess I could put one on the Hawk first and then one on the Pride Mate, or just one on the Pride Mate, although the Pride Mate will eventually outgrow the minus six minus so from so tiny. We'll see here. Tricky decision. I guess also tiny the Pride Mate anyway. Maybe we'll just put two so tinies on one Pride Mate. And that might still save us more damage. So, one card short of uh, this being minus six minus so. Now we draw the Oracle, so that's a little awkward. So we're we still milling the opponents. I mean, just milling them for seven to enable so tiny might be enough, and then we can go on the self mill plan. I guess I can dig it. And then for now we'll play the Prophecy first. And then do I mill them once more? Probably. I guess what I should have done is mill myself with everything. And then the so tiny could mill my opponent so we don't mess up the Scry. But that's okay, since I don't care about these cards anyway. But I guess one of the two Drowned Secrets triggers when we play so tiny would still have to potentially mess up the Scry if we want to optimally mill ourselves here. So yeah, the Sprite Mate is not going to stay zero-powered for very long. Probably still better to so tiny the aerialist here though. We draw Omen of the Sea, so we can name Omen of the Sea with the prophecy. And then we'll play one out in case we find something useful. Frog of Five, not great when they're adding a bunch of plus one plus one counters on their creatures since those will still stay. It could shrink down like a fresh Pride Mate or Aerialist, but I guess it would gain two right away. So Frogify is a pretty bad removal spell here. I think we'll bottom both. And then I guess we'll pass. So we've got 38 cards remaining. Not taking a ton of damage, but that could escalate pretty quickly. And then save the Omen to go with the Prophecy's third chapter. Another Aerialist is not what we wanted to see. Mermaid. Alright, so... That can copy a so tiny potentially if we find a lens of this... Uh, Omen, and with the extra two draws, that should be pretty trivial.
lots of mermaids. Definitely want to land here, and an opt's not bad. Although if I cast the mermaid, I'm gonna mill myself, so I guess it doesn't matter whether or not we mill an opt. Pride mate's already up to a four power creature again. So I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot whether I target the new Aerialist or the Pride Mates. And then we have 26 cards left. And I believe we fall to one life here. Not sure what needs to happen for us to win here. Our devotion's relatively high. Let's see, one, two, three. Uh, this is gonna go away. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna mill myself for four. But yeah, I can't really afford to sack Omen. Drown Secrets on top. I mean, we have to win this turn, so the only place Mermaid, copy, Drown Secrets. And then hope we have enough. Let's find out. Mill ourselves for six. And now the big reveal. Do we win the game? I'm not gonna look. Uh, we didn't win the game. 15 cards, so we needed 5 more, so one extra blue card would have done it here. If we had an extra opt, we uh, could have gotten there. Alright, GG's, close game. Yeah, the margins are very thin, and yeah, as we can see, if we didn't have to mill our opponent at the start, then we would have milled ourselves for enough. But then, of course, these so tinies would have been a lot worse, and we would have died a long time ago. So, yeah, the games with this deck are always very close and interesting. Even if our deck's not great, at least uh, we're doing something a little bit uh, novel. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty nice opening hand with double drown secrets and a couple opts. So definitely gonna hold them until after the secrets. Facing Vampire of Dire Moon, so either a life gain deck or who knows. Maybe monoblank vampires, if that's uh, still a thing. Priest of Forgotten Gods, alright. Priests effective against our Sage, not so much against uh, Drowned Secrets. So I think we're on the Mildy Opponent plan at the moment, as we're missing the Thassa's Oracle. Ooh, a Ragdos Sacrifice. Cauldron Familiar and Graveyard. Don't love to see it, but I guess they need to have a Witch's Oven for that to matter. Alright, no play from the opponent. Maybe missing red mana. Yeah, milling the opponent definitely has a lot of risks involved as well. As we see Woe Strider in the graveyard. And then, doesn't matter whether I opt now. I guess I might as well wait. That's fine. Not taking a ton of damage, and we've got triple secrets in place, so... Don't hate my spot at the moment. And just looking for more cantrips, essentially. Uh, Prophecy is a bit slow, but I guess it's better than nothing.
So they've got 25 cards remaining. I do like Omen. Thassa's Oracle next is not super relevant, not a great blocker here. They did find red mana, which could be an issue here. So with 24 cards left, we get to mill for 6 with each card we play. So we probably need at least 2 more turns. Down to 12. So we'll draw the Omen, and then before the third chapter, I think we cast Omen to get a bit of additional intel. And then another Omen seems good. Frogify could be okay, but their creatures are smallish. So, don't know if it's quite uh, worth it. Although I guess I'll have enough mana to go Omen into Frogify, which triggers the Drowned Secrets a bunch. So maybe it's still okay. But then of course I don't have a great idea of what to name with the uh, Prophecy. But I guess I can cast another Omen here. And then maybe the next cards will inform my decision. So we're getting close. Not our cats in the graveyard. And then bottom the lands. So yeah, I have no idea what to name with this uh, Metamized Prophecy. Can take a look at the graveyard to see which cards we've already drawn. So two opts are gone, two omens are gone. What four off do we have left? I guess Sage of Mysteries, although it's not a card I actively want to draw. So maybe I can scry with the omen to keep something on top. So maybe like a Mirror Maid or a Sotiny. I guess we have a lot of Sotinies left. And then for now we'll... Frogify the Slaughter Priest, I believe. It's either that or Priest of Forgotten Gods, but... Slaughter Priest potentially deals more damage. So how many cards do they have left after all this? Six cards. Alright, so we just need to find one more blue spell. And we get to Sag the Omen to find one. And hopefully we're not taking 12. They could use the Priest on their upkeep before taking a draw step, so that's potentially two more damage. So if they can get us to 10, we could also die. Mayhem Devil, it's pretty scary. So they can attack for four, and then Priest is another four damage with Devil in play. So it's not quite lethal. I guess they're going to go for double priest activation, which is, I mean, still not enough, but it's close. I guess if they can use the two black mana for something, that might do it. All right, Sack Omen finds a blue spell. I guess Mayhem Devil triggers. Oh no, I forgot. I guess now they have enough on upkeep. Unless I can eliminate the Mayhem Devil here with a Frogify. If on their upkeep they sack the Priest, that's two damage plus two from Mayhem Devil. So I guess I can't afford to keep Metamized Prophecy on top. Unless we hope my opponent misses to put a stop on their upkeep. And then I need to find Frogify exactly to put on the Mayhem Devil, and that would save us. So... Yeah, I mean, do we go all in on my opponents missing their upkeep step, or... Do we, uh... Go for the legit win? I guess we'll go for the legit win here. Omen... 
All right, so they might still miss it here. And I do have a chance of drawing into a Frogify. So that's good. Bottom, bottom. And a Thassa's Oracle is not going to cut it. But I guess I'll play it. So yeah, very close. The uh, Mayhem Devil's Sacrifice trigger here is what made the difference, otherwise we would have been at one life. And any Frogify is on top? Nope. So in hindsight, if I didn't sacrifice the Omen, we would have drawn Metamai's Prophecy, and then we would have milled out the opponent, and we would have been at one life, even if they did sacrifice with the Priest. So yeah, if I didn't miss it, we would have won this game, but I uh, forgot about that interaction. Alright, it's too bad. Taking Exaxes. Hold on, I guess, never mind, this uh, game ends in a draw, since the draw trigger from the Priest happens at the same time as the two damage. So yeah, weirdly enough, I guess we ended the game in a draw. Don't see that every day. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't have any mill engine, but double metamized prophecy could potentially see a lot of cards. So I guess we'll try it. Season of Growth, so some sort of uh, aura deck. Start with a Prophecy. Um, don't think I need so tiny when we already have Frogify. Looking for Sage and for Drowned Secrets. Opponent off to a slow start, there's Sage. So probably gonna name Omen of the Sea. And for now we'll go Sage into Prophecy. And then do I mill the opponent, or do we mill ourselves? I do get to scry a lot, so the chances of finding Thassa's Oracle are pretty high. On the other hand, my opponent could also draw a lot of cards with Season, although they're probably not going to draw as many cards as I am going to draw with uh, all these Prophecies and Omens. So maybe we do take a greedy approach here, hoping to find a Thassa's Oracle. Opponent shouldn't have any hand disruption to really mess with that or counter spells. So it's all about just finding one copy of Oracle. Although there goes one in the graveyard. Still take a Sage. Could use more mill engines. So it's a high risk, high rewards line of play here. Paradise Druids. Which uh, probably their draw for the turn. So maybe they have a handful of bomb spells and they were waiting for a creature. Probably gonna name Omen once again. All right, there's Oracle, so now we feel a lot better. Don't need more lands. And then... Uh, we have so tiny at the ready. And then we just want to find more Drowned Secrets. No blocks, probably gonna end up using the so tiny here. Giant growth, sure. Infuriates, so they're definitely going all in. I guess I'll just use it now. Could also mill the opponent for a little bit just to shrink down Paradise Root more, but I'm not necessarily expecting to die here. And we do want to mill ourselves as much as possible. Gotta watch out for a potential fling, I guess. So at the moment they have one card, so even if I mill them for four, so tiny is still only minus two, minus so.
All right, more giant growths. So, yeah, if they have a fling, they can put me to to life. Growth cycle instead. Take 12, I guess. Mother Oracle. Then extra sage is fine. This prophecy might end up being too slow, but I guess more enchantments with triple sage in place still worth it. Sure. And then I'm definitely open to the idea of chump blocking now, given how many pump spells they've shown us. So I could just chump with Oracle then. And then could take the Drowned Secrets instead, maybe that's better. Alright, so we're at 8, hopefully we don't die out of nowhere. Could have also milled the opponent if I didn't want him to draw the season. But it's probably fine for them to have it. Colossus, that does give Trample. Probably still gonna chump with Oracle just to absorb some damage. They have five cards in Graveyard, so they're pretty close to so tiny being a minus six minus so instead. Well, if they put one more card in the Graveyard, I guess that does it. So if they play a Pump Spell, they might end up shrinking their creature, which is pretty weird. And Arcanists. All right, so. Druid is a 4-3 for now, so I guess I could take 4. We've got 28 cards left. So we're pretty close to just winning next turn. Yeah, I'll take it. So we get to go Drowned Secrets. Frogify Arcanists. And then we'll have to do a quick Devotion Counts. So yeah, this should do it. Oracle mill for two with Drowned Secrets. And then we have 12 Devotion. So just enough here. Bam! All right, sweet. So yeah, playing this mono blue mill deck is a pretty interesting experience. Definitely leads to a lot of gameplay that you're uh, not used to. And while the deck's not amazing, it's definitely capable of winning games, especially against uh, slower decks. And there's definitely potentially room for improvement too. There's a lot of cards you could consider. Uh, if you want to go more dedicated self-mill, you could potentially try and squeeze in Jace. Although, we don't have a ton of ways to protect Jace, so it's probably only going to stay in play for a turn or two, which may or may not be worth it. Cards like Narset could potentially help us assemble some of the combo pieces, although it's not super synergistic with uh, Sage. But of course, a passive ability of shutting down opposing card draw can be quite powerful, especially in a world of uh, Satassan Champions. So there's a lot of wiggle room and a lot of room for potential improvement. And uh, that's what Jank is all about, is exploring all these various ideas. And that's what uh, I enjoy so much about Magic. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.